Okay, so the um, first step to setting up the new system is deleting everything the system has made in the past. So you want to go to workspace and then um, go to the coasters folder. You want to probably save your track and train. So I'm just going to drag that to workspace. And then I'm going to delete the old coaster folder. I'm going to go into replicated storage, delete this folder, delete the search script service folder, and delete the starter player scripts folder. And now that that's done, I'm going to open the, oh, it's already open. I'm going to open the um, plugin, click install, and now it will create the new system since it's pretty different. Oh, I don't know, it's not structured very differently, but there are some changes. So that's why you do want to delete the old one because it won't work if you don't. Um, and now that the new system is created, click Edit Rides, and then you add a new coaster here. I'm going to name it um, Launch Coaster, and then you select the track. So I selected the actual track model and it will now tell you why a model is invalid. So like for example this, since it literally contains all the track parts, it's not a valid model because the track model has to be like this. It has to contain all numbered parts from one through whatever. And like it has to not skip numbers, not do numbers twice. And so that's what it checks. I'm also going to color this track back to gray and then I'm going to make it all visible. So now you can see the whole track segment um, thing again. And so let me select the track. You click Save Ride. And so now it will have created a folder called Delete This. I don't know why it's adding that. I'll have to fix that. You have this folder called um, Launch Coaster. And it's created the track and trains model for you. And to replicate storage, you have it here. Service Script Service, it's here. And in starter player scripts, it is down here. So it's created it in all those places for you. And so to select it, you go to No Coaster Selected, and then click on Launch Coaster. Um, friction and gravity, I'd recommend leaving at 1, especially gravity. Friction, you probably should raise if your ride is like one of those small girth flowers that tends to slow down more quickly, stuff like that. Um, why? Well, if, sorry. If we're talking about orientation offset, this is, it will rotate the train by this much when it positions it on the track. I have found that the Y axis is what rotates it sideways. So if your train is pointed like this way, for instance, then you want to change Y. I wouldn't mess with X and Z because you can get, you can mess up the gravity by doing that. And typically 90 degrees is correct for Y. Um, not always. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's something else, but that's typically it for me. Roughness you can raise from um, 0 0.001 all the way up to well anything I guess but even like 1 can be somewhat rough so I'd keep this at a low value. Up offset is just um, how far up and down the trains are moved and track segments this value is not correct by default so you have to watch out for this. The way to get it to automatically set itself to the correct value is to just delete what's in there, press enter, and then it will set it to the correct value, which is 2674. Car separation is the distance between each car. I don't actually know what it is for this coaster, so you can just eyeball it and I'll fix it later. To add trains, you click open trains, add train to get a new one. And so as you see, I selected the model containing all the trains and the train um, selector will tell you if a model is valid. So this train is valid because it has only car models numbered one through four. Each car has a primary part called a root, and that is this part here, right there. And it has to have an attribute called a length, and this is the length of the root part in this direction. So like running the length of the car. And so if you select the train and it's a valid model, it's all set up, you can click save train and it will add it for you. And then um, starting segment, I'll start here in the station, so I'm going to set it to 14. Make sure you hit enter after you input any value, by the way, it sometimes doesn't work if you don't. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add the second no, it's not it. Add the second train. And I'll make it start back here on the break run, which I'm assuming will be right about here. Two five eight eight. Um, you want to start the trains a little before the end of whatever section they're holding in. So, like, the break run will probably end right about here. But if you start it here, and if you start this one before the end of the station, then it's just safer. Like, it won't break at all if you do this. And it's, like, guaranteed to stop in the station and stuff. So that's how you get it to work properly. Um, now that you've added your trains, you can just click back. And now here's where you set up zones. So click open zones. You click add zone to create a new zone. I want to create the station first, so I'm going to call it station. Set its type to station and then color. Let's go with lapis. You want to do these settings in order. And so I guess I can make the station this long and then have it holding right here. So I'm going to set the start segment as 2662 and the end segment as 19. And when I do this, it will color the track. Acceleration 5, brake speed 5, transport speed 5. Make sure these two are the same. Um, brake speed is basically the speed that the brakes will slow the train down to while it's rolling through the station, while transport speeds are the speed that the transports will speed it up to. Usually I just like to leave them the same. And then deceleration only applies initially when the train is slowing into the station. So like if your train comes into the station fast, you might want to set this up to a higher number. And minimum dispatch time is the time between dispatches that will wait even if the next block is clear. And so now that you have the station set up, you can just click back. And if you want to change a zone at any time, like make it bigger or smaller, you can just recolor the parts appropriately. However, keep in mind, zones cannot be split. Like I cannot make this part blue and have like a gap in the middle. That just, it won't work. The zones have to all be like one continuous thing. And all parts of the spline have to be colored to a zone. You can't have any parts that are a color that just does not correspond to a zone. That won't work. And so next I'm going to add this little drop right before the lift here. And so this will be a normal section. So I'm going to say station to lift. I'll make its color uh, bright red. It will start at part 20. And the lift will begin probably right about here. So part 78. And it colors it. Click back. Add zone. So for this lift, this is a launched lift. So there is a lift type you can do. However, I'm going to do transports for this launch. And so I'm going to call it lift, but it's type transports. I'll color it uh, eggplant. Start segment is 79. By the way, if you didn't know this, you can just hold alt. Alt, and um, instead of selecting the whole model, if you're holding Alt, it'll select individual parts, so it's really easy to get segment numbers that way. I'll try stopping the launch at about here, 196. I don't know the transports go super fast, so I'll start at like 15, but the acceleration has to be kind of high for this. Not only because it's a launch, but um, because it is fighting against gravity. And the normal, if you haven't changed the gravity setting, by default, it's like, I believe, 50. And so you want the acceleration to be able to overpower that. So I'm going to try 70, just so I can get up to speed and I'm try 80. It can get up to speed and overpower the gravity that's going to be pulling it straight down. And after the lift, it's going to be a pretty much a normal section all the way to the brake run. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to call this main, type normal. And color it toothpaste. Start segment is 197. And end segment is right before the break, so probably. Yeah, that looks good. 2524. And now all that track is colored. 
create the first break section. So I'm going to call it breaks one. I'm going to have it slow down the train and then hold it here. Um, so type, I'm going to go with normal breaks. These still work as flock breaks, by the way. Color is going to be, let's see. I don't think I've used lime green yet, have I? No. Do lime green. That segment is 2525, and the end segment will be right before this turn, so 2596. Acceleration is same thing because brake segments have transports. I'll show you how to turn that off later. But by default, brake segments have transports that kick in if the train is below the brake minimum speed. So brake minimum speed, I guess it should be named brake max speed actually. But this is the speed the brakes will slow the train to if it's rolling through, like not coming to a full stop, just that this is the speed it will slow it down to. So I'm probably going with eight. And then transport speed, I'll set that to eight. Acceler or deceleration is how powerful the brakes are. So let me try 35, although I can turn it up later if it doesn't stop in time. And then um, brake speed itself, set that to the same as brake minimum speed. It's kind of a mess with these. But I just found that these values work best because sometimes if your brake speed is set to zero, your train just will not advance out of the brake run after it's stopped. And so I'm going to make a it's down where it's slipped, right? Yeah. I'm going to make a little normal section here just down this curve and call it, let's see, between brakes. Color can be, I guess, really black. Start segment is 2597. End segment. Alright, for that, 2622. Read that, and then I'll have brakes too. And I guess this could be an unload station if you wanted it to be. Um, you don't have to, or there's no setting specifically for an unload station. However, if you just have two stations, um, they'll both work, so just do that. So, type brakes, set this to eight, eight, eight and eight, I'll leave 30, acceleration can stay at six or five, doesn't matter, because this is a slow speed anyway, so. Two, six, two, three, end segment is two, six, six, one. And we can just leave that color, since it's the only zone colored to that. Yeah. Okay, so now we have all this done. So the coaster should work like this. However, I want to show you some some things. So there are a few settings specific to each zone that just aren't on here. And you can find all your zones in the replicated storage folder. And so, for example, if I want a brake run to not have transports, then I would uncheck this box. And um, if you don't want it to be a block break, like you just want to make a trim break, uncheck this box. So you can find those settings actually in the folders themselves. And so now we can try out. Try the starting segments. Yeah, I did. We can try this out, see if it's working as it should be. It's not, we'll figure out the issue. Okay, so I probably, oh, no, that's that's correct. I forgot there's another break segment here. I was about to say, why is it advancing? But I forgot, this is a break segment right here. And so this train, this patch, this train will stop, wait for it to clear the station. And so now it will roll into the station. Let's see if it makes it up the lift. Barely. I want to turn acceleration up. If you get into a train, press T to talk with a POV camera. Is it going to make it over? I did. I probably want to make that a bit faster, but made it over, I guess. Oh, it's not fast enough, though. It didn't. It just no. It didn't valley. I thought it did. My bad. 
I'm not super familiar with this coaster. I've only ever used it to, to set up the system. It's not my ride. So as we can see, the train is pretty smooth through the layout. Let me just, uh, I guess I'll leave these visible for now. But yeah, we're just waiting for this train to clear the main section. Since this lift obviously it isn't an actual lift, you can't stop the train at the top. So the train has to wait in the station to dispatch. Let's make sure this brake section has high enough acceleration to stop the train. It does by far. Okay. Also, if you notice, the train's a little bit low. So to correct that, I will just turn up the off, the up offset, and I can probably turn car separation down a little. So now it's dispatching. Gonna roll nice and smoothly. Now it's a big change with the new system. It is so much smoother. And just as a side note, if you try to jump out the train and, yeah, hold on. So, just to clarify, there you go. Yeah, normally if you jump out the train, it will not allow you to, but at the end of the ride, it will unfreeze your player. I just have it set not to do that right now. But yeah, there it goes. So it's all working. Um, so I can either go to the plugin or just here in settings to change the car separation. I'm going to try moving this down to like 0 0.5 and then up offset a little higher. So probably like 2.5. And you can just eyeball those values. Um, the first brace, the deceleration was a little higher than it needed to be. I feel like they could probably roll through there a bit faster. So I'm going to set the brake minimum of speed and brake speed to 15. However, I don't want it like launching out of there after it's come to a complete stop. So I'm just going to leave transport speed at 8. And I do want to turn the lift acceleration way up. Like, let's try 100. Or even 120. And we can try making it go up at like 20, 25 instead. And so now if we test that. Wait for the system to load. You have to see, um, yeah. So you have to see on the left side of the screen, POV camera enabled or else um, when you get in the car, it won't immediately toggle. I mean, you can still hit T to do it, but just wait for that. It's only like 10 seconds after you load in, so it shouldn't be a problem for most rides. Man, this is still slower than I'd want. I guess I made it up faster, so that's better. See, a lot of installing this is just messing with the values. Um, you can see the train is... I guess I need to move it up a little bit more, but it's closer, and the cars seem to be better spaced. Yeah, they need to be, there's a little bit of a gap still there, but you can just turn down the car separation a little bit more. So yeah, that's just how you edit things. Um, You can't change those values, like, while it's running, like right now, I'd have to stop and um, go into studio to do it. But, yeah, that's all you have to do, just basically eyeball it, trial and error. And now it should slow down a little more gradually. Yeah, it's nice.
and then it'll continue at a higher pace. And then this station, or this zone, these brakes will only advance like five. So see how it's slowed down? Uh, got out of the um, station right before we got into it. Nice. In perfect timing. I guess it's a good speed. We observed the drop pretty well. Not terrible. And so, yeah, that's um all there is to that. And now, as a final thing, you can add triggers. They are object values now. They're not events. So, object value. And all you need to add is an attribute. And it is called, I believe, train. Could be totally wrong here. Um, believe it is called train. And um, so you just name the trigger to the segment number that you want to fire it and instead of firing it like an event all it will do is change this value here or the attribute train so the value itself that it sets to will be the object of the train that hits it and the attribute will be or sorry no 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 i had it totally wrong oh i had it totally wrong no here's what it is the value will be the train that hits it's like the model itself the attribute that you need is called time, and this will change and display the time when the train hits it. So if your coaster is running two trains, this value will change whenever a train hits it. And so you can just rely on seeing when this value changes as the trigger. However, if your coaster is only running one train, this value itself will never change because the last thing that always hit it will always be that same train. However, this time attribute will change. So you can look for this using um, get attribute changed signal um, as opposed to just changed. So if you do programming, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you're probably lost. But yeah, triggers are just designed so your scripts can tie into the ride and know what it's doing. And so let me just write like a little quick mock script uh, just to prove that it works. So, all right, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so that's the value. And so I'm going to use value get attribute change signal time connect, func connect function we're going to print the train that hit it and i'm done <laughs> i forgot the print statement yeah uh make sure it's not being no value So that is an error. All right, cool. So I just wrote this, wrote this really quickly. And so if you look an output on the left, when a train hits it, it should display that. I got in the seat before the POV camera loaded, but now that it has, I can just press T to stop it. And so, see, it's told me that if you look on the left, it's told me that train one hit it, and the time it hit it at was, uh, well, this. <laughs> That's the Unix time it hit it at. So, you can use that for triggers. And so, like here, if I wanted to, I could script like an effect, like a fire effect to go off or something. So that's how you do triggers. Um, if you want to, let's say, go back and remove a train. Open trains, click train 2, and delete it. And it's gone now. If you want to remove a zone, you can't do that via the plugin. However, what I would recommend is you go here and you just delete the folder. And uh, you're going to have to recolor the ride or add a new zone that matches the color or whatnot to avoid breaking it. Because remember, every part has to be a color that corresponds to a zone. But 
remove the folder and then I would restart the plugin or I mean sorry if you want to keep using the plugin after that restart studio so it can recalibrate the zones we're also just not going to appear correctly it's going to break something in here but that is how you would do it and that is pretty much all there is it is designed to be super easy and fast to set up I showed you a few ways you can get advanced that like triggers but you really don't have to all you have to do just use the GUI kind of walks you through setting up the train, setting up the zones. Just make sure it follows, or sorry, make sure the track model and the train models follow the criteria I told you earlier. And if you do all that, your coaster should pretty much work right away. You just might need to tweak a few of these values, but that's it. If, um, if I want to add roughness, I can try something like low, like 0 0.5. And so here you'll see the simulated roughness. And my read is quite sensitive, so a lower value is better. Let me wait for the camera. Yeah, so an output it says POV camera enabled. Get in the seat. Um, roughness will not appear off right like this, but if you're in the seat, you can see it's bumping around a little bit. Because I have it at a low value, but it's still bumping around quite a bit. So yeah, I would use low values for this. But yeah, that's how you add roughness. So that pretty much concludes everything. Um, I guess just ask me if you have any questions. But that's all there is to it.